Charlie and the Chocolate Factory merged practical and digital effects so seamlessly that even though the film is nearly 20 years old, it's often difficult to tell what was done practically and what was done digitally. The things people thought were real were done using CGI, what people thought was CGI was done robotically or with what's otherwise known as animatronics, and what people thought was animatronic was actually done for real. Take for example the nut sorting room. This is one of those scenes that looks 100% real, but deep down you know that it can't possibly be so. I mean, squirrels are fast and wild and there's no way you're going to be able to get them all to sit still on little stools. At least in this part, this is true. But the squirrels you see in this scene are actually real and they are actually acting. 40 squirrels went through an intense three-month training camp in order to train them to do what was required for each shot. Training started by first getting them to run out of their cage across a room and then on to a tube. This then transitioned into running from their cage across a little stool they would use on set. Then they trained them to sit still whilst interacting with a nut. Next they were trained to open the shell, remove the nut and place it in a bowl. The only problem is the squirrel's first instinct is to eat the nut. So in order to stop them from doing this, the nuts they used were actually made from plastic and dental acrylic, something that squirrels apparently don't like. And on average to get each squirrel to successfully open and remove the nut without trying to eat it took at least 2,000 repetitions. But now, even though they could get the squirrel to sit on the stool, remove the nut, put it in a bowl, and to test the nut for freshness with the help of a nut stuck on a blue stick, it was still impossible to get all the squirrels to do it at the same time. So they made 12 animatronic squirrels with a whole range of movements, and these squirrels alongside some CG ones were used in the background of the shots, as you can see right here with this guy. For obvious reasons, the attack scenes had to use digital squirrels if only just so that they could probably choreograph the action. But that doesn't mean that all the squirrels in the sequence were CGI. Real squirrels were also trained to run up Veruca and then jump off her shoulders and head. However, a squirrel's claws are incredibly sharp and so in order to protect the actress playing Veruca, a stunt woman was used. But because of the framing of the shot, Veruca's face would be visible. So the stunt woman wore a latex mask sculpted using photos of Veruca for reference. These squirrels were then composited with the photoreal CGI squirrels to complete the final shot. Now, as you'd probably expect, the chocolate room itself was an actual physical set built on Pinewood Studios 007 stage, and the chocolate lake and chocolate waterfall were also real. In fact, months were spent trying to achieve the correct colour and consistency for the liquid chocolate before making a total of 1.25 million litres at a cost of around 32 cents a litre. That's like 100 concrete trucks full of the stuff and a total cost of close to half a million dollars on brown chocolatey looking water. Unfortunately, because the practical set was mainly built from styrofoam blocks on wooden platforms, it kind of ironically wasn't very practical because certain pieces couldn't be stepped on or they'd break. This meant that the shooting could only take place in very limited areas of the set. So for this part of the Chocolate Room song scene where the Oompa Loompas walk all over the set and all the Oompa Loompas were actually CGI. In fact, every Oompa Loompa that appears at any time during the film that is under a quarter of the screen size is CGI. Now, earlier on in this scene, Augustus falls into the chocolate lake, and even though the chocolate lake and Augustus's fall were both done practically, the mixing machine and the tube that sucks him up are CGI, and Augustus was filmed in front of a blue screen and then composited into the shot. As we said before, any time an Oompa Loompa appears under a quarter the size of the screen, it's CGI. But when they are full size, they are actually played by a real actor called Deep Roy. In order to have multiple versions of Deep Roy acting out the dance in different positions, the VFX team either had to lock off the camera and do multiple takes of Deep Roy doing the routine in all the different positions, or they had to use a motion control camera and do multiple passes. A motion control camera is a camera they mounted on a special dolly or rig that has motors or servos so that any movement you make with it can be precisely recorded and then repeated as many times as needed. And for Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, they needed to repeat it a lot. This shot alone required close to 60 passes, and to achieve all the Oompa Loompa song scenes, it took two teams, six months, and close to three 
thousand different passes. The Oompa Loompas in the movie are supposed to be 76 centimeters tall, but Deep Roy measures 127 centimeters. This wasn't a problem when the Oompas were CG, and when it was Deep Roy himself, they could use oversized props or forced perspective to maintain the illusion. But what about when the Oompas had to appear alongside other actors? Well, for this they used animatronic puppets. A wide variety of animatronic Oompa Loompas were designed and built to have different characteristics depending on the shot they were going to be used for. The ones for the TV room had to have heads with radio controlled servos so they could be seen to monitor the screens. For the boat scene, one animatronic puppet had to be able to beat a drum and the others had to have a mechanism that allowed them to be pulled forwards and backwards with the movement of the oars. And finally, the harvesting umpers of the chocolate room had to be so realistic that they wouldn't stand out when placed next to the real Deep Roy. And this sequence is perhaps one that best explains the effects of this entire movie, in that by perfectly combining animatronics, practical effects and CGI, it's almost impossible to tell what is real, what is digital and what is just a puppet.